All right, welcome back, everybody. We're going to talk here about two distinct clinical entities that share some similarities as far as uh, what part of the body is affected, and that's going to be phimosis and paraphimosis. And because the names of these two disorders are similar, uh, many, many people confuse the two, but they are distinct clinical entities and the management is quite different and the urgency of these disorders are quite different. And that's going to be very, very important for you to know. Um, these are medium yield for these steps. Um, so it is important to know. Uh, however, um, you will really only be expected to have a very basic knowledge of this. So any question that comes up on USMLE, I would expect to be pretty straightforward. And that goes for a lot of men's health topics in general, unlike OBGYN. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button in the upper right-hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. Definitely subscribe to my channel and you'll get notifications every time I put a new video up. Okay, so phimosis is a fibrous constriction of the foreskin. You are not going to see this in uncirc—I'm er, sorry, in circumcised males. Okay, this is only going to be seen in uncircumcised males. So what happens here is that the foreskin covers the glands of the penis, and that foreskin cannot be retracted. Okay, now normally the foreskin will retract either if you manually retract it or if you have an erection. So let's just draw a little illustration here. Here's the body of the penis. Here's the head or the glands, and then we'll draw a little urethromiatus there. Uh, and so the foreskin will usually come up almost to the tip of the penis, kind of like this. Okay, so you'll see a little bit of the tip of the penis, but um, certainly not all of it. Well, what happens with phimosis is that that foreskin becomes stuck. Okay, so it'll be like this, and it won't look a whole lot different from a flaccid, uncircumcised penis. Um, the difference is you will not be able to retract it. And that is a problem because retracting the foreskin is important for cleaning um, the foreskin. And if you can't clean underneath the foreskin or clean the foreskin itself, um, you can get infection. So this is really, really, really important. It is not an emergency in contrast to paraphimosis, which we'll talk about, uh, but it is important um, that you recognize this. So often it's associated with balanitis just because of the risk of infection uh, being higher if you cannot clean uh, the foreskin and the glands. And it can also be associated with balanopostitis, which is inflammation of the glands and the foreskin. And in uh, the next video, we will talk about uh, balanitis and balanopostitis in more detail. Um, so, uh, like I said, exclusively in uncircumcised males, and it can occur at any age. However, there is something called a physiologic phimosis, and what this is, is it's a normal phimosis, and this occurs in young, young boys um, from infancy up to around age five, and the reason that this happens is that the I guess you could call it the aperture, but technically the name is preputial ostium. It's very narrow, and so it's very difficult to begin with uh, to, to retract the foreskin. And that's okay. That is okay at that age. However, if they pass five years old and they still have this phimosis, then you're going to need to refer these children off to uh, pediatric urology. The most common cause of phimosis is poor hygiene. Um, so if you do have small infections, you can get uh, a, a fibrosis, which will make the foreskin uh, less compliant and so more difficult to retract. 
Some features, um, if you do have them, you may see local edema, erythema, and tenderness of the foreskin, uh, as well as purulent discharge. This all points to a secondary infection, which can certainly happen with phimosis. So the diagnosis here is clinical. The management, in many cases, you'll need to refer these patients to urology, especially if they're older, um, older children, certainly adults. Pain control, if there is pain, you just go with NSAIDs or acetaminophen would probably be better in children. And then you can attempt a very, very gentle manual retraction. Uh, and you can attempt that. It's not always gonna work, uh, but uh, it can be attempted. And certainly if you are able to retract the foreskin, um, then um, you have essentially treated the disorder. If you are not able to manually retract, then you should refer these patients to urology. They may need surgical intervention, which would be circumcision. Um, topical corticosteroids can also be useful um, as a sort of second line uh, before we would send these patients off to surgery. So that can be useful. And then if there's any underlying infection, you want to treat that. Um, so when we talk about, uh, about infections um, like balanitis, um, we have to look at um, bacterial causes um, and we have to look at fungal causes, two of the, the big infectious causes of balanitis. Okay, now paraphimosis is a different beast. This is the opposite. It's the inability to reduce the proximal edematous foreskin distally over the glans penis into its natural position. So once again here, we'll draw a penis, kind of. Um, and so basically what's happening here is that you are unable to get the foreskin over the corona. And that's the, that's the proximal part of the penile head. And so what happens is that this gets very edematous and very, very angry, and it gets stuck right there. And you get this red, swollen, um, very tense foreskin. And the problem is that this can cut off circulation to the head of the penis. It can result in ischemia and necrosis. And this is what makes it a urologic emergency. Again, this only occurs in uncircumcised males. Circumcised guys, their foreskin is mostly gone, so this is not going to happen. It can also occur at any age. The most common cause of paraphimosis, and this is really important for all you nurses that watch my video, is not returning the foreskin over the glands after catheterization. So if you put a Foley catheter in, of course you have to retract the foreskin, clean it up, you put the Foley in, make sure that you replace the foreskin. Um, that is very important because if it gets stuck, then you're dealing with a, a whole nother problem. So again, like phimosis, poor hygiene is a risk factor, and a history of phimosis is also a risk factor. Features here, it's painful. Penile pain, um, the area that's edematous and swollen is going to be very, very painful, and there can be urinary retention in children. Okay, the diagnosis here, again, clinical. There's no labs. There's no imaging that we need to do. We look at the penis. We can see that it's paraphimosis. It's not rocket science. So you want to make sure you inspect the uh, glands for, uh, for any kind of ischemia or necrosis. If they do have ischemia or necrosis, you're sending these patients off for emergent surgery. Um, that would be a complicated case. If it's uncomplicated, you can refer to urology, get a urology consult, pain control. Um, so that can be anywhere from a local anesthetic to opioids. Um, it just depends on the patient. And then what you'll do is you'll attempt a manual compression of the ring and glands. So often what happens, what gets this stuck is, is inflammation and swelling, and then you can't push the foreskin back over the head. So um, by doing manual compression and try to drain that inflammation, that edema out, a lot of times that will be sufficient to return the foreskin back into its rightful place. A topical antibiotic may be useful as well if there is any kind of sign of a secondary infection. Um, so consider something like bacitracin. Once again here, circumcision is curative, but that should be considered a 
last resort. So to recap, phimosis is where the foreskin cannot retract proximally behind the glands. Physiologic phimosis is normal for boys under age 5. This is commonly associated with balanitis and balanopostitis. The most common cause is poor hygiene, diagnosed clinically, attempt manual retraction, or use steroids. Surgical approaches are second line. Paraphimosis is the opposite. The foreskin becomes trapped proximal to the glands, and this is an emergency. So the most common cause is failure to retract uh, or return the foreskin uh, over the glands after catheterization. This is also associated with infectious disorders of the penile skin, and this is diagnosed clinically again here. If you see evidence of ischemia or necrosis, these patients immediately go to surgery. If there's no evidence of that, then you can attempt that manual compression and try to return the foreskin to where it's supposed to be. If that is not sufficient, many of these patients will in fact need surgery.